Okay, what right does a woman in Islam have as regards her inheritance from her parents and spouse, especially when faced with customary influences? Now, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Like I said in Surah Al Nisa, Quran 4, verse 11, Allah tells us about inheritance and how it should be distributed, what is the share of some um, heirs and their fixed shares and all of that. A lady as a daughter is entitled to inheritance from her parents, both her father and her mother. Whatever she inherits from them is our property, like we said, it belongs to her. And so whatever she also inherits from her husband, if she's widowed, she has a fixed share also, one over four, I believe, which is also hers. Now, when we say that a woman's property is hers, it's just like the example of the um, woman companion that I mentioned um, just now, who is eligible for the cat. So we see that some of these customary um, practices um, having to do with she then has to share with somebody or she can't have this or she can't control um, that is not from Islam. The example of the female companion really shows us how wealthy a woman can be while her husband is nowhere near. Because we know um, that Zakat is not something that um, anybody can take. Like, I'm not eligible for Zakat. There are specific people, the eight categories of people who are mentioned, the Lifukara, Wal Masakin, the travelers, those indebted, um, the administrators. We have specific people who are eligible for Zakat. So Zakat is not for everybody to receive. So for a man to be eligible to receive Zakat, we know that he's one of the fukara, miskin, or highly indebted, or things like that. So he's not in a good financial situation. And for a woman to be eligible to give zakat, we know how rich she has to be, that she has up to the up. Yet, our uh, wealth, wherever it comes from, from my inheritance, from our work, from our business, is completely hers. And that's the way Islam has uh, made it. So whatever um, cultural practices that we are seeing today with regards to this are just um, the patriarchal way that people have been doing things over time, especially when we realize that in our um, environment, before Islam came, women didn't even inherit at all. Women did hardly um, have properties of their own. So Islam coming to Nigeria from wherever I am from, the trade routes and all of that, our men, especially in those days, that is why it's not just in the treatment of women, in many other areas of our lives, we have things that where we have mixed religion and culture, and then it's now having the coloration of religion. So it's really important for us to continue to have sessions like this, where people get to understand what Islam really says. And as an Ummah, we continue to um, pursue the basic, we continue to go after what Islam really says, rather than how we have been doing it, how we met our fathers doing it, or what we think is right or not. Some things just feel like, ah, I know uh, there are also many misconceptions around this. Oh, if a woman is, well, if she has property, she won't be obedient to her husband. She will become disrespectful and, and this and that. Yes, while there are some women who may become arrogant because of their wealth, a, a lot of women are not. So, and those exceptions should not then make us to change what is the rule and the norm. And we should also be mindful of the ruling of Allah regarding usurping other people's rights on justice. 
people tend to believe that once you are married to someone, I think the rulings, the general rulings of Islam if regards to relationships does not matter anymore. I think you can treat your spouse anyhow and it doesn't matter. The reality is that those rulings that apply, so just like um, if you're, the, the right that you have, the prophet said in some hadith that um, a Muslim has like six rights over another Muslim, if you greet you, you respond, if he's sick, you go visit him, if he sneezes, you respond, and some of those things. It applies even in your marriage, even with your own family members. So are other women. So when Allah says that you should not do riba, for instance, so I cannot borrow you 5,000 and still can borrow you 5,000, but you pay back with 10,000 next week. I also cannot do it with my husband or my sister or my parents. The fact that we are family does not change the ruling. So if Islam prohibits usurping the rights or the property or the wealth of others unjustly, if we have been told that we would give account for how we accumulated our wealth, as well as how we spent it, then how would men account for the wealth of their wives that they have absorbed unjustly? And the women just have to keep quiet and swallow the oppression because they want to keep their marriages. How do they want to account for that before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So if we really understand that we are in this dunya for a while, that all of this relationship will be judged by the most just, then it's important for us all, men and women, to be mindful of our actions. If a husband is in need financially and he knows that his wife has, there is nothing wrong in him asking her. Whether he wants to borrow or he wants her to give him, if she decides to give him, fine. If she decides to borrow him, it should be borrowing with the intention to pay back, of course, because a lot of men just keep borrowing even though they do not have intention to pay back. The Prophet وسلم, said in a hadith that if a person borrows anything with the intention to not pay back, so right from the time he's borrowing, eh, shall I borrow me, don't worry, next week. But within him, he knows that. He has no intent of paying and he does not pay. It is taken as theft. It's not different from stealing. And that's the way the person will be punished on the day of Kiyama. But if somebody borrows with the intention of paying back and is making the effort to pay back, even if the person is unable to pay it back, on the day of Yama Kiyam, recall that, recall that on the day of judgment, Allah is on, not um, unjust to any of the slaves. And there will be retribution. So this person stole my 2000 naira on this day. I would get it back. But unfortunately, on this day, there is no money for trading. Every all the, the only currency available on the day of judgment is this, good and bad. That's the only thing we can trade in. So whoever you have usurped their money or their property in any unjust manner, even if the property, even if it is an inch of land you would pay it back on the last day, but now it would be with your good day. The same thing would apply with spouses. So if you have usurped your spouse's mm -hmm. wealth in any way, you would pay it back on the last day. Because Russell Abbasad, perfect on that day, we would not have the current compassion of, oh, it's my husband, no worry, just leave him. That day, it is only when you are in Jannah that you would resume your, oh, alhamdulillah, we made it. So if we continue to put these things into our consciousness, that we are going to account for all that, we are going to account for the treatment of our spouses, that we suffering the right of our spouse is the same as we suffering the right of somebody else, and you are going to pay it back even if you are not paying it um, in this world, I think that would serve as a huge deterrent for a lot of men or even family members, uncles, elder brothers, Cousin, older cousins that just usurp the property and right of the women within the family because they, they are men and they can do it and get away with it. They may be able to get away with it in this world, but they definitely won't be able to do so in the hereafter. Exactly. Thank you.